What is up gang and welcome to another episode of Inspire By. In this series we look at the musical trends past and present to understand the techniques used so that you guys can make better music. My name's Will and I release a plethora of music under the moniker Hush Child. Today's video has been much requested and we're looking at the beats behind Jay Diller. Today, I'm gonna to show you three different ways that you can achieve that famous J Dilla swing. The first step is gonna be for those people that enjoy recording it in live, whether that be with the QWERTY keyboard or a MIDI device like your keyboard or an Akai MPD. Step two is gonna be for those people that prefer to draw in their MIDI lines. I'm gonna show you just how you can get that swing offbeat kind of lazy feel. And finally, step three is gonna be the sample method. Whether it be sampling from a piece of vinyl or off of a platform like Splice, I'm gonna show you just how to chop your beat up so again, you attain that lazy Dilla feel. If you enjoyed this episode guys, maybe learned something new, make sure to give it a like. And right now only 80% of my audience are currently subscribed. So just double check, drop down there, give me a subscribe and whilst you're there, hit that bell icon so you get notified when a new video goes out. Now of course today we're only focusing on the drum side of things. So if you wanna see more Dilla videos in future or have an idea for a future episode, leave a comment in the dungeon down below. Let's jump into it. All right, let me put the magic specs on. Now that I shouldn't be getting any crazy reflections in there. The headphones on so I can hear. If you're wondering what this is, uh, it's a music stand that has the bird's eye view camera duct taped to it uh, so I could get an angle. There's no smoke and mirrors here. <laughs> And I think it goes without saying in this video, you know, there's a high bar to meet. Jay Diller is a legend and before him, it's arguable that nobody was doing it the way he was. And since him, there's been many educators that have taught similar methods in replicating his sound. I'm just one of many. And if this video doesn't suit your needs, um, there's a bunch of other educators online that can give you other methods to record in that Jay Diller sound. But since you're here, let's jump into it. So over here to my left, I've got the MPD and I'm gonna use that as a drum rack controller in Ableton. And I've just got three sounds in there. Um, using the Soundsmiths Lo-Fi Sample Pack, they often sponsor these videos and they help out the channel a great deal. So make sure you check them out at soundsmiths.co.uk or head to Splice and type in Soundsmiths. I've just got a kick, snare layer and a hi-hat in here. So this is enough to just get a basic groove going. Now what we're used to is either drumming a real rigid layer or the first thing that we learn when we're trying to beatbox is that boots and cats method. Okay, so boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. But they're both quite rigid in their performance and generally quite boring. When I create a groove, I want something to sound good with just the click alone. So for this example, what we're trying to get down is first getting used to playing swung hi-hats. The second thing that we need to learn is the art of the flam. So if you're not familiar with a flam, it's when a ghost note is played just a little bit ahead of a full quarter note. So if we were to hit the snare, Gagang. We would have this quiet note first and then we would have this big explosive accent. So in terms of playing it on the snare and the hi-hat, we get this instead of together. So that just adds a little bit more flavor. Add that to your hi-hat and you're there. That adds a nice bit of groove there. It adds some lazy backbeat and it's really the fundamentals of having the J Dilla groove. It's my favorite way to record and that's why I wanted to show you that method first. If you watch nothing else, you've got that down. But I understand a lot of viewers, they don't like to perform it in. They're not as confident or comfortable. Some people prefer to draw it in. So let me show you this method. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight a region, right click and choose insert MIDI clip. I'm gonna draw just a simple kick, snare, kick, snare. And we're gonna make sure that my grid is set to 16th notes. This is the septuplet method. This has been covered in other YouTube videos before, but it's a really great way to gauge how your rhythm is going to sit within 
this melodic section. So as I said, right click, set your grid to 16th notes. And then what you're gonna do is draw in eight notes. So we're just gonna draw these in and then Command D. That will copy those up. Now, if you highlight these regions, what we get is a little arrow, a little node that appears here, and you're able to extend or shorten these notes. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna squash them back up here and you can see that it fits to the grid. Now what we've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes within this region here. So to get that swing, what I want you to do is just delete that eighth note and we're gonna delete the three notes that follow the first. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna delete the two notes that follow this second note here. One, two. So we're just left with that. And then from there, you can again copy these up, Command D. Boop, boop, boop. Now what we get is this feel. Which is really, really great. We've already got that swing. Now you can leave it like this. It is still quite robotic, but it's way better than having this set to the grids on maybe eighth notes. That's a little bit tiring. This has got a little bit more groove to it. If you wanted to replicate what I just did in performing it live, then all you have to do is add a little bit of a flam with the snare and maybe just create a little bit of humanization with the fourth hi-hat here. So we can move this off a little bit. Maybe we can move this one forward a little bit. Now we get this. It's entirely up to you where you want that snare to land. Sometimes it's nice to have the second one on the grid and the hi-hat a little bit late and the first one a little bit early. So you get this really push and pull motion of the drums becoming a little bit late and then catching up with the beat. Like you haven't totally fixed the drum sample to the grid. And that can be really, really nice and effective. Now for the third and final example, I've used three degrees, maybe. And this was used in Jay Diller's high record. So this is how I've, I've pitched it. Like I said, I've pitched it down a little bit. I don't wanna get a copyright strike. First things first, when you drag your sample into Ableton, it might be off the grid as it is here. A really quick way to get your track on the grid is to double click on it and find this transpose button. And you're just gonna transpose until you find that it kind of meets up with what's on the grid. And it might just be a little bit off. It might look like this, but it's close. What you can do once you use the transpose function is you can use the detune by sense function and just pull it until it really does line up with everything on the grid. Then what you can do is hit warp, reset transpose, reset the detune function. Everything is sitting on the grid and it's in its original key as well. So now what we're gonna do is press shift command T, the same way you would open up a brand new MIDI track. And what we're gonna do is drag this sample into simpler here. We're gonna do it by slices and we're gonna slice it by region. Now, if it's a short two bar sample, then you're gonna to wanna to split this up by eight regions. This is four bars, so I'm gonna split it up by 16 regions. Now, bear in mind, this technique only works with a six eight groove or a three four groove to get that J Diller swing. So you're converting something that sounds like a waltz into something that sounds like a lazy four four groove. I'm not saying that you can't do it in four four, just to get this same example that Diller used on high, you're gonna to wanna to do it with a three four or six eight feel. So the original record sounded like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Now it's really important to remember that the kick is landed on the one and the snare is landed on the four. What you should see when you drag it into simpler and you separate it, like I said, if it's two bars, separate it by eight regions. If it's four bars, your sample, separate it by 16 regions. And you're gonna see that you have a division on the kick a hi-hat, a snare, and then before another hi-hat. So this is really important because it means all your kicks are gonna be down on the left-hand side and all your snares are gonna be down in the middle here. And everything else is melodies or hi-hats. 
So this is great. So we can play the original tune. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But we can jump from that six, eight groove into our four, four, which is a really nice flip. Or we can just start the track from that four, four groove. So to do that, we're just gonna speed the groove up a little bit and just play kick, snare, kick, snare throughout our pads. So they're the three methods that I utilize. Performing it in live, drawing it in via MIDI, and then sampling a record itself. As always guys, let me know in the dungeon below which method you prefer to use. Is it drawing it in? Is it performing it in live? Or was there something I missed? If there's an opportunity for me to learn, I would absolutely love to know and have a conversation with you. Above all else, I hope you're feeling inspired to maybe make something new today. So there we have it guys, three ways in which you can achieve the Dilla Swing. A quick question for you guys, obviously this episode was just aimed around the drums, we didn't perform a whole track. Is that something that you'd like to see in future episodes, whether it be a step-by-step -step guide or looking at just the intricacies of another artist? Do let me know because I'd be greatly intrigued. As always, if you head to patreon.com forward slash the Will Hatton, you can download my new Lo-Fire effects rack, which a lot of the community have been enjoying because it recreates some of the effects found on the SP404 and generates that vinyl noise and pitch warp that you'll often need to like resample yourself. If you do sign up to the Patreon, of course, there's a few different tiers, whether it be sample packs, you just want access to any of the projects we've looked at in previous videos, or you want to book a one-to-one -one session via Zoom where we talk about production in a little bit more detail. Find something there that suits you. However, if that's not for you, make sure you check out the description below. You can find all my socials and our Discord where you'll also have access to an amazing community of like-minded individuals that are also making tracks along with us. I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. As always, I'll see you next time.